The purpose of this video is to show you a method I've adopted for setting and using a standard dovetail jig which makes it significantly simpler in the setting up and to achieve accurate dovetail joints. For the purpose of the video I'm going to be using Lumberjack's DTJ 300 dovetail jig which gives a 300mm capacity in conjunction with their PR14 router. Now the dovetail jig itself comprises of various components and most of the jigs of this type are very very similar so this, this video will explain the methods for any make or brand of dovetail. You've got the standard comb which is here with this one having a half inch spacing. You've got the lockdown handles for the two different components so that the wood is held firmly in place. We also have the slide-in fingers which give the offset to give the cut the correct spacing for the actual components. Now the half inch dovetail itself <coughs> is a lap dovetail as can be seen here. The lap being the uncut section here which works ideally for a draw front or something of that nature. The two components of the joint are cut at the same time, but because they are, there is an offset element to give the correct cut, as can be seen here. So the cutter itself goes into each aperture to complete the joint. Now the cutter itself is a half inch bearing guided cutter. The design of the cutter is such that the bearing is guided by the fingers of the actual comb. The cutter needs to be 15 millimetres approximately across the base of the actual cutting edge. Now just recently there have been a few of these jigs supplied on the market with cutters that are half an inch or 12.5 millimetres across the base of the cutter. If you have one of these cutters it will not work with a half inch comb. So you do need a cutter with 15 millimetre width at the bottom of the cutter. Now before we actually start cutting a piece of wood there is something that you need to do which makes setting of this so much simpler. Get yourself a piece of timber and plane it so that we have a width of 17 millimetres on one face and a width of half an inch or 12.7 millimetres on the other face. So that's 17 millimetres by 12.7 millimetres. The purpose of this will, be, will become apparent and obvious later, but the half inch needs to be able to just slide in between the fingers of the comb snugly but without major resistance. The 17 millimetres is our magic number, if you like, for setting the depth of the actual cutter below the base of the router. Now, it isn't set in stone that this is going to give you an exact joint, and there might be some fine tuning needed, but remember, 17 millimetres is almost your magic number to start with. Now, I've inserted the router cutter into the router the bearing guided cutter that I showed you earlier and we need to set the depth of this to 17 millimeters below the base of the actual router. Now the easiest way to do this is first of all to put your router onto a flat surface, release the lock and slide it down until the router, at, the router cutter sorry, actually touches the bench or the surface. So at the present time the router cutter is flush with the bottom of the actual router. To get our 17 millimetres, we can then use our stick that we prepared, or I showed you earlier, and our 17 millimetres we can set by using the depth stop on the router, inserting our 17 millimetres. When we remove this, we can then push the router down and it will give the correct set at 17 millimetres. Now, I always have a block of wood, which I sit beside me, two holes in, it's only a piece of chipboard, nothing special. So when we push that to the side, when we release this now, we can just push it down 
and our router's still sitting on the base, but our cutter is now protruding through by the 17 millimeters that we want, the bearing, which runs in the comb, sitting below the base plate of the router. Now, that was our 17 millimeters that we set using our piece of wood. Now, if you haven't cut a piece of wood like this, another way of doing it is just make yourself a quick little setting template, 17 millimeters, cut a notch in it. This can then be put onto your router to set the depth of cut. Now as the router is actually set, we can leave that and it is ready to actually cut our joint using the dovetail jig. So now let's get to the actual nitty gritty of cutting the joint and how to use the jig. I've got two pieces of timber that I've pre-prepared here, a piece of oak and a piece of sapili. I've got two different timbers just to give you a slight contrast so you can actually see once the joint is cut the accuracy of it. Now the first step is to decide which piece of timber the dovetails are going to be cut into. Now I'm going to use the sapili for this. So the actual dovetails will be formed in this piece of the board. Simply slide the piece of timber up into the dovetail jig. Now don't worry about the left to right positioning at this stage. All we want to do though is position this and lock it into place with the lever so that it's low but just forming a slight lip. We can now take the second piece of timber, again square cut ready, that is going to form or accept the sockets for the dovetails to go into. We can now slide this through from the back and we use our piece of timber that we've just put in to give us the stop position. Now it's not set level at the moment, that doesn't matter. All I'm trying to do at this stage is to actually get the pieces of wood in. Now looking at the section that we're going to have the dovetails in, you want to remember that where there is an actual finger in the comb is where a dovetail will be. So what we want to do is now slide our piece of wood up because our piece is locked down here, it's giving us the right height setting now. And we want to slide this along so that we can look at it and say we can get one, two, three, four exact dovetails in here with an even spacing on either side. Now, if we were to move that along, of course, we're going to get a, a cut here, a cut here, a cut here, and it's not going to give us an even spacing. So just by eye, line it up, and then what we can do is lock that off and here you can see we've exactly got it in line with the comb. Now coincidentally this piece of wood does line up perfectly. We can now, with that set, move our other piece of timber across so that it is in exact line with our other piece of timber. Now if we cut like this, what's going to happen is the joint when we put it together will be offset because of the nature of how we cut it. So what we can actually do is take our magic piece of wood again and this time using the half inch width the width that slides between the comb if we slide that in beside our timber like this we can then slide our stop in from the side and just using the spanner lock it off and also at this stage we can push that forward and do the same with the lock in the front here. Again, just nip it up with the spanner, remove our piece of timber, and now if we slide our piece of wood along, that is now giving us our exact offset. And this is completely repeatable. So each time now we take the wood out and we reinsert, the stops are going to give us that offset so that we can do repetitive joint after repetitive joint. The comb is sitting just behind the edge of the piece of wood where the um, dovetails themselves are going to be. So we're now going to be cutting in one, two, three, four, and five cuts to finish the actual dovetail cut. Now, at this stage, we're ready to actually do the cut. When we do the first cut, what is always a good idea is to do what we call a scribing cut along the front edge just to prevent any tear out. Now when you look at the router, 
the cutter itself will always be rotating in a clockwise direction when you look at the top of the router. So if we think about this, as it's cutting, the ro clockwise rotation could cause us a little bit of tear out on this leading edge. The simple way to solve that is to actually to do a cut in what we call a climb cut in the reverse direction that you normally would. So cutting from right to left, just along the leading edge, which will give us a scribe cut along here. Now, you can just do it by hand, it's not a problem, but another simple idea, get yourself another piece of scrap timber, just put a little cleat on the end, slide it in against this stock that we've just put roughly in place at the present time, and that gives us a proper fence against which the base of the router will cut. Now, this is now ready to go, so I'm just gonna put on my safety wear, Obviously, ear defenders, because you're in close proximity to a noisy machine, and eye protection, an absolute must. We don't want any um, sort of thing flying up and getting in our faces. So we'll put these on, and then we'll get going. Okay, so we're ready to actually cut our joint. We've got our router depth cut at 17 millimeters from the base of the router. We've got our safety wear on, and I've got it connected to a vacuum source that will automatically switch on when I engage the router. You won't collect all the sawdust because of the nature of it, but you are going to collect an awful lot, and it's going to take out the finer dust as well. So, we've got our packing piece. We can put the router in against that packing piece, so we've got the edge of the router touching that. Now, if the base of your router is rounded, you may have to adjust the size of this, but make it to suit your router. So, proceeding with the cut, we can push the router back against the wooden cleat that I've made. The purpose of the little uh, notch on the end is to stop it actually sliding in movement. So as you can see, if I move it that way, it's going to move. But as I'm going to be cutting from right to left, that will then prevent the actual piece of wood from moving. So we can start this up. Extraction's connected. <laughs> to actually stop. We can move that and put it onto our block, keeping our set, and you can now see the actual line that's been cut along there is nice and crisp with no tear out because we did it as a climb cut, cutting from right to left. The next stage is to actually cut our finger cuts or our dovetail cut, so we can remove the cleat that we had in place and we can now bring our router in and just remind yourself you need to do one, two, three, four, five cuts to complete the joint. So we can bring it in, sit the bearing on the end of this finger in readiness to start, start the router and then we can do our five cuts. So. So the five cuts have given us the four sockets and the four dovetails. Now you may have seen I actually held the router in place when I stopped to allow the cutter to wind down before I removed it. This is just to prevent any accidental chance of catching a revolving cutter on the fingers and actually damaging them. So the moment of truth, these should go together and align. We've got our four dovetail sockets. We've got our four evenly spaced dovetails, again with the correct spacing at either end. Now if we put those together, it's a little bit snug. But there we have it, completely accurate, dovetail nice and tight ready for gluing got a little bit of a chip out there 
but not a problem, easily, easily rectified once it's glued up. Now, when I put this together, we need a little bit of persuasion with the rubber mallet, but it is a very good tight fitting joint. Now you may find that when you do this, the 17mm depth of cut of your router cutter under the base gives either a loose joint or even a too tight a joint, it won't actually go in. And all we need to do is just make the adjustment by adjusting the depth that the cutter protrudes from the base of the router. Reducing the depth underneath the base of the router will loosen the joint, increasing the depth or the protrusion of the cutter below the base of the router will tighten the joint. But do this in small increments, because remember, each time you adjust it, not only are you cutting more off the actual dovetail, but you're cutting more or less off the actual pin as well. So it's, it's effectively, you know, you're doubling your cut. So just make small adjustments on your trial pieces to get the cut perfect, and you will get the joints similar to you can see here. Now, the only thing we haven't actually discussed as yet is the depth of cut when we're cutting the sockets. Now, you probably saw this rail in here. This is designed to actually stop against the back of the router. So as we're going in, we get a consistent depth of cut. Now, again, this is going to vary significantly depending on the router that you're actually using. The base may have a straight back, like the lumberjack that I've been using. It may have a rounded base and therefore, you know, the base, this, this will need to be set further back. Now that is an element of trial and error. But rule of thumb, going back to our magic stick, rule of thumb, start off with your actual depth of the gap between the back of the comb and this, basically the half inch that we've got here. If you're using a straight based router. If you're using a round based router, of course, this has got to be further back. So use the 17 mil just to push it back slightly. Do your first trial cut in a scrap key piece of timber, not one of the pieces that you're, you know, your precious pieces of timber for your project you're working on. Do a trial cut. You may find that the tail stands slightly proud, in which case you'll need to move the fence here slightly back just using these two knobs it may be that when you hammer this in or knock it in that the dovetails sink below this section in which case it's just a case of bringing the board the, the uh, fence forward so just do a little bit of trial and error and very quickly you'll be able to get good accurate repetitive joints and with that offset the correct setting here now i hope this video has helped you i know it's quite simple but a little bit of you know practice there's no reason why you shouldn't be replicating joints like that time after time after time enjoy your woodwork <laughs>